foot. My friends, I was not anxious just yet to start eating, but I have given up all pleasure in my life so as not to keep you waiting any further. But you all won't mind if I finish my game, I'm sure. Poor Sutilus here never wins, but if we don't keep playing, we'll never get any better. These slaves, they never learn. Mm. You see her? Fortunata, Trimalchio's wife. Oh. If you think he's rich, you haven't met her. She counts her coins by the barrel. As for her former occupation, well, it's not the sort of thing you would discuss among refined company. You wouldn't shake hands with her is what oh. I'm saying. Uh, she's a prudent woman, if a bit of a nag. Whom she likes, she likes. Whom she dislikes. And she always has a plan. Even when you least expect it. Keep me. Ah, a Falanian of Lapinius's vintage, a hundred years in the bottle. As wine lives longer than we mithril men, so let us be merry. I had worse stuff yesterday, but the company was far better, so it balances out. Thank you. Nothing but bone, that's all that we are. Death hustles us humans away. Today we're here and tomorrow we're not. So let's live and drink while we may. Carver. 
straw. My dear friend, you've been oddly silent. Tell me, do you know anything of the twelve labors of Hercules or of the story of Ulysses and the Cyclops? I read these things in Homer as a boy, but everyone knows those tales. You always have some great story of adventure. Surely you have something wondrous to share with us this evening. Well, Trimalchio, if I am not ready to spill everything at your kind words, then may I never earn a thing. Back when I was a slave, the gods decided that I should fall in love with the tavern keeper's wife. Tarentus, you remember Melissa, don't you? <laughs> well, one day, back at her villa, her husband died. And, well, because I was so eager to console her, I just had to go down there myself. And it just so happened that my master was in Capua for business. So I asked one of the seasoned soldiers to escort me to her house. We set off in the dead of night with only the light of the moon to guide us. Well, when we were halfway there, we reached an old cemetery, and the soldier ran off. The next time I saw him, he was stark naked, and his clothes were lying on the ground. And then he starts peeing on them. And I kid you not, he turns into a werewolf. He howls at the moon and then runs off into the woods. Well, as startled as I was, I continued on to Melissa's house. And I got there, she was so surprised at what a late hour it was. But she said, oh, if only you had gotten here earlier, you could have saved us. There was a wolf in the sheep pen, and it was a bloodbath. Luckily, one of the slaves went in there and nicked him in the neck. Well, when I had gotten back to my master's house, there was a seasoned soldier lying on a bed with the doctor tending to his it's true. May the gods strike me down if it wasn't true. For I do not see the word. You all know that our Nicaros would never tell a lie. He's dependable at no sort of chatterbox. My, by Hercules, it was a sound story. How my hair stood on end. But I think I'll tell a bit of the spooky story now, but I'm afraid I'm a bit of an ass on roof tiles compared to our Nicaragua. <laughs> when I still had my long hair, our master's favorite boy died. By Hercules, he was a pearl. Excellent. One of a kind. So, not only was his mother grieving him, but also most of us were in mourning. Suddenly, from outside, witches began to howl. We had, at that time, a Cappadocian man, tall, exceedingly courageous, strong as an ox. He rushed outside, sword drawn, left arm wrapped up in the shield, and ran one of the witches through the middle, just so, right here, let it be safe, that which I touch. We heard a groan, and clearly, I'm not lying, the witches disappeared. The big Cappadocian came back inside, threw himself onto a couch, and his whole body was purple as though he'd been whipped. Clearly, the witches had cursed him. Once the doors were closed, we all returned to our post. But as the mother was embracing the body of her son, she touched it and saw that it had become a little bundle of straw. It had no heart, no inner, no nothing. It was clear to me that the witches had already snatched the boy and replaced him with a straw changeling. So I implore you, cried Fred, for it behooves you to believe me. There are women who know too much. Yeah. There are women of the night. And that which is up, they make down. Huh. Furthermore, that big brute of ours never recovered from his curse, and a few days later he died insane.
thing at that time, Fortunata. I made a clear ten million in just one voyage. So what the gods want happens quickly. Life is such a fickle thing, is it not? You've been an idiot, guys. This is all well and good, but Giton is my son. Giton? Yeah, right here. Who is Giton? Right here. No, it, it doesn't matter. We are all as worms before death. Even I, who was once a worm and am now a king, shall be a worm again. Stikus, bring me the clothes I am meant to wear to my grave. See my fine clothes? Stikus, see that the moths don't get at these or I shall have you burned alive. I want to be carried out in splendor so that all call their blessings upon me as I go. I hope I like this stuff in the grave as well as I do on Earth. <laughs> Friends, you must all pretend that you have been invited to my funeral. Slaves, pretend that I am dead. Play something pretty. <laughs> 